You're listening to the Monday Night Community Show with Daniel on BRFM. This is the Daniel Monday Night Community Show on demand through YouTube. Thank you very much for choosing to listen to us through this method. If you'd like to keep up to date with when I add new interviews, then subscribe to this channel. We present The Artist by John Fryer, performed by Dan Dawes. If you would just take a seat, sir, then we will be able to continue from where we were last time. Now, have you come to a decision on posture? You were sitting cross-legged last time, as I recall. Do you wish to retain the same position? You do. Excellent. Oh, yes, it gives you a look of prominence and respectability, and that is what it's all about, eh? <laughs> now, we discussed very briefly, if I remember, uh, about the prospect of a smile. Some people believe this gives them more of a personal, human touch. I realise this may not necessarily be your major concern, but some of your colleagues have opted for a more gentler public image of themselves of late. Uh, they seem to feel that the whole profession itself has been a little too much in the news lately. Some cooling off is required. A, a kinder side would be preferable. That's what I'd heard. Would you agree, sir? <sighs> Excellent, sir. Well said. <laughs> Things are the way they are. Yes, best left alone. Leave them the way they have always been. That's what I was thinking. Why, why change things that don't need to be changed? That's what I always say. What's gone before is the way it shall be in the future. The only way that it can be done. Who am I, or anyone, to alter the status quo? Changing the, the social order. Who would want to do something like that? Are those at the bottom of the heap? They are probably happier there anyway. Hmm? Wouldn't you agree, sir? After all, they don't have to endure all of the worry and concerns that you at the top have, do they? They should be content with their station in life, just as God intended. Do you not agree, sir? Oh, <laughs> of course, <laughs> I've almost set up. I'm just putting the paper in place. Uh, oh, yes, I, I see quite clearly where we are, yes. Yes, it's, it's starting to shape up nicely. And the, uh, smile? <laughs> I know I mentioned it before, but... <clears throat> oh, no, 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 I, I can see your point. It's the, um, teeth. They were the, um, the sharpness, I think. It would not look, um, not, not come across well in this light. Hmm. I think... I think on reflection, we shall keep the uh, neutral look that, that, that Sir seemed to think suited him best. A and who am I to disagree? Let us stick with that. And that position, is that, is that, is that, is that comfortable for you, Sir? I only asked you to, due to your, uh, your appendage. Is that the right word? I and a magnificent specimen it, it is. <clears throat> Anyway, let's get on. I uh, I see things are improving, sir. It's what I've heard. It was on the TV only last night, sir. I was there, sitting in front of the telly, evening meal on my lap, watching the flickering lights, as it was once said, and the presenter was there, staring straight at me. Well, into a camera, I believe, <laughs> although I'm hardly an expert on these things. <laughs> and the presenter said that everything was on the mend. So that's all right, then. I said to my wife, uh, you see, everything is back to normal. It's in the media. And the following morning, uh, as I was coming into town, uh, there it was on the front page too. Crises over. Situation normal. It makes us all feel so much better in the railway carriage, I can tell you. Wouldn't you agree, sir? That it is important for us all to remember just how lucky we all are when compared to someone else. We should never forget to thank the good Lord in the heavens that we are not those poor souls over there, because if we ever did, 
we might end up being one of those poor souls ourselves. Don't you think so, sir? Yes, well, um... Uh, oh, oh, would you mind raising your head up a little bit, sir, so, so that it, it seems that you are looking at the viewer, you see. That's it, just to show the light catching your eyes. <clears throat> um, I'll, um, we'll continue. Is this for public display, sir, or just the family? Do you have a family, sir? A good lady at home, Mrs... Uh, uh, any children? And <laughs> what a lot of little devils there can be. <clears throat> wouldn't, you, wouldn't you agree, sir? <laughs> uh, uh, fair point, sir. <laughs> Rained again today. Did you notice? Oh, I suppose you probably don't, after all. This office is very high up, isn't it? I briefly took a quick look out through your office window. Quite a view, sir, if one may put it that way. A, a panoramic view of the whole city from up here. Oh, yes, sir. I know it's difficult to see from up here, but there are real people down on the street. And when those cold winds blow, they always seem to blow the hardest where the poorest walk. Have you noticed that, sir? Uh, no, sir. <laughs> of course you wouldn't. Why, why should you? <laughs> you have problems of your, of your own. <laughs> you can't be expected to, to know everything. I mean, I, I know you do, but you can't be expected to understand all the things that the, the little people go through every day. And one wouldn't expect you to, sir. But I was talking about the weather, sir, wasn't I? <laughs> if you remember. Throwing it down, it was. Dogs and cats and cats and, well... Well, well, more cats, I suppose. <laughs> which is which is a strange saying when you think about it. It's, you rarely see them when it rains. They're probably off somewhere staying dry, unlike we humans, of course. We battle on regardless of the inclement weather. <laughs> that was how I came to meet Isaiah. Did I mention him on our previous appointment? Oh, um, couldn't you just put your hand back? No, 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 sir, the, 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 the right hand. That, that's better, thank you. Yes, Isaiah. You know the old joke, one eye's higher than the other. <laughs> no? Uh, well, I met him at uh, Tower Bridge when I was making my way the first time to meet you. I say met him. Actually, I, um, well, I stood on him by accident. I didn't do it on purpose, you understand. I thought I was going to be late, so I started to proceed across the bridge, walking a bit quicker to try and make up the time, as it were. And Anyway, as you know, or maybe you might have forgotten, it doesn't really matter. But the thing is that as I was concentrating on my, on my timekeeping and not dropping my easel and art materials, I tripped into Isaiah. Now before... Oh, you don't mind me telling you about Isaiah, do you? Excellent. <laughs> now, could you just look at me again, please? I'm just checking the eye line. Good. Good, that's looking about right. Might need, sir, to brush your hair over your... your... well, uh, both of them, in fact. Actually, in this light, sir, they, they, they hardly even show. If asked, we could always say they were just a couple of growths. Know what I mean, sir? Uh, yes, quite. Uh, I shouldn't allow myself to get distracted. It's what the wife says. You never stay on the point, always going off on a tangent. Anyway, I was telling you about Isaiah. Now, he was on Tower Bridge inside one of the arches, which is probably why I never saw him until I tripped into him. You see, he was on the floor, and, and if I'm honest with you, he, he was not looking his best. I think on the UT, as it were. Isaiah might even have spent one or two nights there, because he was not looking particularly good. Now, I'm not one to judge, sir, if, if one is down and not being far off out. There is probably little I can do about it. After all, I, I have my own problems, as you would expect. But at the same time, I, I can understand and accept that sometimes the world is a pretty rough place. Isaiah, I'd have said, had definitely found a rough place to spend the night, and due to circumstances had been forced to stay there. Anyway, like I say, <laughs> my good lady says, I have digressed. So, I apologise to Isaiah for the inconvenience of almost kicking him in the head due to the angle of which he was lying in the street, and I'm about to set off on my journey to meet you, sir. As I said before, Isaiah, however, did something then that I found to be a, a bit odd. 
First, he told me not to worry about the fact that I had almost assaulted him. But could I also help him look for his hat? A woollen one that appeared to have blown away in the night wind. Well, it can be very windy on a bridge over the Thames. So feeling a bit guilty, I had a quick look round. If the hat had blown off and landed in the water, there was no longer any evidence of it. During this time, which was only a few minutes, I think, looking back, he introduced himself and explained how he had come to be living on Tower Bridge. Due to his firm being refused a loan, they could not expand. Redundancies were made. Mortgage payments missed. And that was the gist of what he was going on about. Between ourselves, sir, I, I wasn't really listening. Now, I, I know that sounds a bit heartless, and now I would tell this tale, I suppose it is, but please remember, I believed I was running late, and so I didn't feel I had the time to listen to someone else's hard luck story. After all, do we not all have a few bad stories of our own? Anyway, I nodded and frowned, oh, in what I felt were all the right places, but after a couple of minutes, I, I explained that I really had to get on. He thanked me, and then I departed. Ah, uh, could you uh, look towards me again, sir? If you keep moving like that, it makes it harder to keep the right perspective on things. It's always easy to lose the right perspective, don't you find, sir? My feeling exactly, sir. So where was I? Oh, yes, Isaiah. Strange name for someone from the home counties. Anyway, <laughs> I mustn't digress. Now, after giving up on the late woolen hat as a lost cause, I was about to leave when I had a brainwave. I offered him my woolen hat. Actually, once again, just between us, I never thought he'd actually take it, but he did. It wasn't a great act of charity. In fact, it had been an unwanted Christmas present several years previous, which I hardly ever wore. So I gave him the hat and turned to leave. That's when it got a little strange. Don't mind telling you. Oh, eyes on me again, please, sir. And what did we agree on about the, uh, the claws? Just withdraw them a little. That's better, sir. You see, sir, Isaiah now caught me up and stood directly in my path. I, I also have to tell you that he did not look happy. In fact, he was shaking. I thought with anger, something like rage, to be honest with you. I, I thought, oh, what on earth have I done now? I, I had apologised for bumping into him on the floor, which I, I still say was an accident. I tried to find his woolen hat, even though I thought it was hopeless. What did he want from me? Money? He never asked. An apology? I had said already that I was sorry. Then it hit me. He thinks I've stolen his hat. Yes, I asked a bit nervous, if the truth be told. Can I help you? He said, I'm dutiful. I do as I'm told. I thought, <laughs> that's, that's nice. What does it mean? Then he continued, saying something that I didn't expect. I've been told to bless you. Uh, I'm sorry? That's all I could think to say at the time. He's just told me. I have to bless you. And I do as I'm told. May I? I was, sir. Uh, if I'm honest, more stunned than anything else. So I just nodded and he raised his right hand and made the sign of the cross. Then I think he prayed. Only for a moment. Then he looked up. I thanked him and asked asked why someone had suggested that I needed to be blessed. Do you know what he said? He looked at me, straight in the eye, deadly serious, and answered, because you are about to enter the lion's den. With that, he turned and walked away, and never seen him since. Odd that, don't you think, sir? But here's another strange thing. Before I set off that morning to come here that first time, I had felt a bit nervous. After meeting Isaiah, I stopped feeling nervous about seeing you. Uh, don't move for a moment, sir. I'm just, I'm just putting the finishing touches of light to the point of your, your tail. And your horns are only just visible, exactly how you wanted it. Ah, there you go, sir. The very picture of evil personified. Would you like to view it now, sir, or after it has dried? Very well, sir. I'll just move the easel around. I think, even if I say so myself, that I have managed to show your teeth off particularly well. You could clearly take rather a large bite out of anyone. Sorry, anything with those. Especially with the sharp, pointed ones at the sides. And how is everything? 
at the bank these days. In The Artist, Dan Dawes played the role of the artist. Artwork for the production was by Sheila Jackson, and the play was written and directed by John Fryer. The Artist is an audio production for Political Art 